What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Black Swamp Comics and today we're going to be doing a review for Night Terrors issue number two. We're also going to be doing a review for two tie-ins that I read, Detective Comics and also Angel Breaker. Also very quickly I'm going to be going over a couple issues that I really liked from last week which was Wonder Woman and Punchline. So we'll be going over those briefly. Uh, just to let you know, uh, I think that this week uh, was really good and I think that this week I think we got the best tie-in for the series so far. Go ahead and get started with Night Terrors number two which is the main issue and uh, let me butcher some names real quick for you guys and then we'll get started. So this is written by Joshua Williamson, art by Giuseppe Kamenkali, Stefano Nessi and Kaspar Wishnad, I don't know. Colors by Frank Martin, solid name brother, and Kaspar Wishnad. Letters by Troy Petetti. So I'm pretty sure I just butchered the hell out of those names. I apologize. But in this issue, I think if you've been only following along like the main story issues, I think it's a very serviceable story. But I feel like if you're kind of just reading the main stories in a vacuum, you're not getting the full impact of the whole the whole the whole event i think that what's really making this event i think is 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 the the greatness of some of the nightmares in some of the tie-ins uh, i haven't been reading every single one of them but i've been reading some and i've been pleasantly surprised by some of the nightmares i do recommend at least trying to pick up some of the uh tie-ins um just so that you can kind of get that the the scale of things well anyways uh, last time we uh, on the last issue so this is technically the third issue uh, we had first blood issue one and now issue two and in th this issue we see the golden age sandman get resurrected by dead man uh, for the purpose that the sandman somehow was knew something about the nightmare stone he knew something about the origins and we do get that origins of the nightmare stone here we go back in time to where sandman tells the story of that there was this cult of people who were trying to resurrect this nightmare storm sto stone or whatever and they were going to sacrifice this dude they were just gonna stab him sacrifice him but sandman stepped in tried to save the dude come to find out that the dude was actually a willing uh sacrifice even though uh he was tied down to the slab which you know which kind of all right whatever guy ends up stabbing himself uh, i believe that this might be um it looks like insomnia to be honest like when you look at this panel he looks like insomnia he ends up doing the deed himself and then everyone else kind of takes like this like death potion you know like the whole jim jones kool-aid stuff they all drink the kool-aid but apparently, you know, Sandman did a little old switcheroo in it and put some sleeping potion in it. So apparently they did not kill themselves, which means that there was only a partial ritual. So the Sand Nightmare Stone was not come into full fru fruition uh, into the world. So, but it, it was, I guess, enough to kind of bring it forth a little bit. Uh, and then Sandman lost track of it. Like, it was like, it was there one moment, and then it's gone. I uh, love the art in here. Some of these panels of just, like, in the rain with Batman. Yeah, Batman always looks cool in the rain. Uh, we find out that, you know, Dead Man's, like, wondering, hey, well, are the, any of the people that were at present at this ritual, are they still alive? He's like, it's a long time ago. Um, but it was very unlikely. What we do get though is a descendant of one of the cult members of uh, of that and we step into the, that person's nightmare where he's like it's been 80 years. Um, I think it's a pretty cool nightmare. Nice little cool interaction with insomnia. Insomnia ends up like smashing them, killing them, and this is where we kind of see like, hey, if you die in your nightmare, you die in real life, and that whole kind of thing. Uh, Batman uh, and slash Dead Man and also Sandman get called back to Terrific Tech, which is the base of Mr. Terrific, and this is where we find out that we have like a group of individuals who did not go to sleep, mostly like robot guys, right? Uh, we got Red Tornado in there. And we find out that you know uh, that the, the the longer that the heroes stay in sleep, the deeper they go into a coma, and the further they stay, they they stray from their physical bodies. Uh, we get a little glimpse of Mr. Terrific's nightmare in there, which is pretty cool. Another little homage to Adam Hughes. I, I don't know if they're doing it on purpose, but every time I see that, I'm like, hey, that's Adam Hughes' signature, man. <laughs> which, by the way, check this out. And we've 
and so it turns out also that dead man is still has like some kind of connection with insomnia so he's able to somehow go back into insomnia's nightmare which we visited before and we get a little bit more of the background of insomnia now the thing about this is that this is a dream world so this is kind of hard to say okay is this the definitive you know uh, it's, it's a dream you know and that's kind of what's tricky about dreams sometimes is that we don't know like how much of it is real and how much of it is truth um and we find out that you know apparently while he was at arkham he was being uh forced to stay awake and uh and john d's looking for his uh, stone and that's all we get it's like we're okay so he was tortured or whatever whatever through that connection that brief connection that dead man had to insomnia Insomnia was able to kind of track him down. It's kind of like GPS cell phone, you know what I mean? Like when you talk to, when you're talking and uh, and, your, and your phone's wired, they can track you down. So he sends over the sleepless nights, which is kind of like, you know, this event's equivalent of Dark Knight's medals. So uh, anyways, I really love the art in here where these guys show up and it's like the lights go off so you can tell the emergency red lights are on and uh and you just kind of see like the silhouettes of these nightmare creatures and we end up with this thing where like red tornado actually turns into a, a nightmare Our red tornado actually gets beheaded by one of these creatures and and then on the next issue won't be out till another two weeks and the death of dead man so anyways that's pretty much what happens in here and overall i think it's making good progress on its own like the whole thing but i think like i said uh to really get the full enjoyment out of this i, I feel like you got to read some of the better uh tie-ins and i think one of the best tie-ins which leads me into the next review one of the best tie-ins so far is uh detective comics number one man hold on Let's talk about Detective Comics, man. All right. This is the first one. I think it's part of one of two. And I'm going to tell you guys, wow, I really, really love this issue, man. Um, I was unaware, but as soon as I saw the cover, I was like, oh, that's a Federici cover. But then I saw that he does the interiors as well, man. And that's so amazing because it's always a treat to see uh, Federici do interiors. It's kind of like I remember him doing like some of the metal stuff and it always looks great. But now this is one of those sweet cases where the vision of the writer and the language of the writer matches the tone and, and, the, and the quality of the art as well and they kind of merge together to to really give you a really great story let me give these credits bro, before i dive in because man i like this i like this book so much all right so dan waters was the writer on here ricardo federici was the artist and the cover artist uh brad anderson the colorist and steve wines was the letterer uh and then we got different variant covers by kyle hotz and bernard chang so uh wow i'm just gonna say this was a really really fun treat and i was confused for like a little bit of the like i was confused for like maybe up to five pages deep uh but that art was so good that it kept me going and it was so interesting that when it finally started coming together i'm like wow this is this is actually really good and so it turns out like this is a the nightmare of uh, James Gordon, uh, the Commissioner Gordon, uh, and uh, we've you know snowing. It's snowing in Gotham City in July, so I can already tell you. Okay, that's the dream right now, and you kind of just see him kind of like lamenting the death of his son. Because if you go back, uh, Commissioner Gordon's past is that his son turned out to be a serial killer, and uh, so and now he's dead. So he kind of laments that, and but he always leans on Barbara for that support, and he always uses Barbara for you know, hey man, I got to keep going. I can't just think about my failures with my son. And we get a little bit of that. I love the art, man. Uh, we see him go walking through the streets of Gotham, going into this diner and stuff. And I really love this atmosphere, this art, this this very chalky, dull. But I really love the fine details of the pencils and and the lighting. It's it's like it it's it just works out, man. So, anyways. Uh, we also see a little bit of insomnia and we see that we're actually in a dream world of Gotham and there's a few beings that are being summoned right these are like you know 
powerful beings from like weird dimensions and stuff like that and they're being summoned by insomnia right uh they don't care i, I feel like they they're the way they're written is like they're like super powerful but the only reason that they're coming even bothering to come up to the summon is because they're bored of eternity but here's what what really did it for me man there's like three dudes that are like summoning these guys right and they all look like freaking minions right they got like the mask with one eyeball and stuff like that and they're like sitting around this clock and first of all i love the symbolism of the clock right i love it because it fits with the whole art thing right it reminded me a lot of salvador dali's art man now if you guys aren't familiar with salvador dali's art uh, i think it was called like surrealism so it made you feel like you were in a dream state like he is i think one of his most famous artworks is the is the one where the, there's like a clock melting on a tree branch and listen Federici's art style is a little reminiscent of that kind of style that kind of feeling that kind of vibe so we got that here right three dudes are using this creepy clock to you know you know bring back uh you know summon these nightmare forces or whatever oh man the writing in here is really good uh because it does like have like this kind of an alien feeling so there's like this these beings are the ones that are narrating oh we were summoned and everything and then there's this great dialogue this great panel here i'm gonna read it to you guys right and he's talking about like these people wearing masks or summoning them with the clock and he says those aren't true faces by the way they have other ones beneath and he's talking about the mask they call those top faces mask we believe the denizens of this dimension do not can't actually see through them so they serve some sort of purpose here now i really love that dialogue because it feels so alien like having these beings describe mask like from their point of view it feels alien and it and it just adds to that surrealism of the art and the dream state and i, I just really loved it. i feel like they really understood the the um they really understood the the assignment here and then the next page we get a, a, a look at these ugly creatures man boy these things are treacherous they are heinous these things are just like body parts all over the place i mean it's gruesome federici does a great 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 uh uh style great job of like the design on these things it's like hellblazer almost kind of vibes pants labyrinth that weirdness to them and uh and i'm not gonna tell you guys the rest of the story because i feel like this one is just like something you guys should definitely check out but there's like so many cool elements like you know jeff gordon falling apart his whole ineptitude his frustration of you know his helplessness to help gotham city it's just so good man the art just fantastic it just hits and um yeah man i definitely recommend this one man if you're not picking up any um of the night terrors tie-ins i recommend you pick this one up at least uh this is definitely a good one for sure um yeah but wow this thing was so wicked the other issue i did was um angel breaker man so i know i know i should probably done like i read detective comics first and then i read this one which might have been a mistake because you know just seeing that switch from the federici art to this art here which isn't bad it's not bad it's just not federici stuff you know this is uh a lot more uh you know toned down more linear uh kind of art it doesn't have that scariness to it um and overall i feel like i didn't really enjoy this issue not necessarily because i feel like the issue is bad i just don't feel like i know enough about angel breaker uh i think there's a character here named raptor or something like that there's a few uh, they're all new characters like there's very i don't think there's any characters in here that i'm like familiar with so it was very difficult for me reading this because there was no one character i could latch onto and just ride that character through all the characters felt new to me they all felt weird to me uh i know angel breaker is a fairly new character i think uh showed up in like one of the deathstroke stories i, I think yeah, which brings me to this point i think you would enjoy this a lot more i think if you have that storyline that background with the with the recent deathstroke and i think it was like shadow war or something i think that was there was like a deathstroke uh 
you know event that that happened recently so i feel like i didn't get the full appreciation of this um and at the same time i think i was just riding high off of the detective comics uh after that so anyways that's it for uh, angel breaker um not really necessary i mean unless you read the death uh, the deathstroke stuff and you enjoyed that stuff then yeah go ahead and uh check it out and then very briefly i'm gonna go over last week's issues which was uh night terrors wonder woman i really enjoyed this issue uh this was kind of um i really enjoyed uh juan Ferreira's art in here uh juan Ferreira is like one of my favorite interior artists as well it's just something about that traditional style that i really enjoy uh and and i think that this was kind of a and this was also like justice league dark oriented so if you're like a justice league dark fan uh, I would suggest picking this one up because you get to see like a little bit of callbacks to James T and the fourth Justice League Dark run with Wonder Woman uh, from a few years ago. And also you get to see some of John Constantine's nightmare. You get to see uh, Detective Chimp's nightmares. And uh, it's just it's just a fun read. I enjoyed it. I think it was really good. Um, I, I don't think it's necessary for the understanding of the story, but it doesn't hurt either. I think it's uh, it, I think it's one of the better ones, and I really enjoyed the art as well. And then the other one I really enjoyed was Night Terror's Punchline. So this is a really wicked cover as well. Very awesome. Uh, Punchline, very cool character. I think that she's still she's still missing as a character that core story, like that one thing that's gonna make her like like people attached to her right like harley quinn's got the whole you know she used to be a, psych a psychiatrist or she fell for the joker and then she rose back up and the whole ivy thing so she does have that kind of that di that identity or that thing that people can see th and identify with and i think punchline hasn't really received that treatment yet however in this issue it's just action oriented and it's just really fun watching punchline take on some of the nightmares and i do like her aggressive attitude and uh, take no prisoners kind of thing and uh so i really enjoyed that as well um but overall detective comics boy that was a great story um i'm still i'm still i'm still liking this event guys i'm still enjoying this event and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen next. Especially, I can't. Especially, I can't wait to see the next issue of Detective Comics Night Terrors as well. So, anyways, you guys, let me know if you guys are reading Night Terrors and uh, what are some of your favorite tie-ins so far, and, uh, and uh, if you guys are enjoying this. And uh, and also, uh, and with that being said, man, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, take care, peace. <music>